why don't you tell our viewers, listeners a little bit uh, background about yourself, kind of who you are, what you do, where you're from? Uh, well, my name is Chelsea Carlson. Uh, I am originally from uh, Mount Olive, New Jersey, but right now I live in Brick, New Jersey. Um, so enjoying the shore. <laughs> uh, I've been playing and writing my own music. Well, I've been playing music forever, but I've been uh, doing the whole singer songwriter thing for about 12 years now, which is crazy to me. Um, and uh, I, I also am in a folk trio called Barty Party. Um, so I've got some music going on there as well. I'm also a music teacher and a cat mom. <laughs> I too am a cat mom. Cat moms <laughs> unite. <laughs> For first time listeners, how would you describe your music or what genres would you say that you touch upon? I don't like to box myself into a genre because I listen to almost everything. Um, and so, you know, I, I kind of write almost everything too. Uh, my, my music that's already out there is very much like classic rock inspired. So if you were to go online today and look me up, a lot of the stuff you'll find is very rock. Um, my new music that I've been working on is a little bit more in the singer songwriter pop realm, um, kind of like Sarah Bareilles Adele style. Uh, but you know, I, I, have a little bit of everything going on. <laughs> so you do solo work and you also have the trio. How did that come about? How do, how do those two worlds interact? Well, I've been doing the solo thing for a long time. I've been in a number of different bands and I love being in bands. It's a lot of fun, um, but it can also be very hard with scheduling and stuff like that. So sort of all along the way, when I've been in bands, I've also done solo stuff. Um, and at some point, I don't know, around 2013 or so, I just decided, you know what, I'm mostly going to do solo stuff. Uh, and, and that is mostly what I've done. Uh, my trio, uh, Barty Party, I know it's a, it's a fun name. <laughs> um, we actually met while we were on the cast of the New Jersey Renaissance Fair in 2017. And we actually were just assigned to work with each other to put together a show for the fair that year. But we ended up gelling so well that we're like, we should just be a band. So, um, so we have been since then. And we actually just finished up in November recording our first album. Um, so we're hoping to release that this spring. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. And who are your uh, your bandmates in Barty Party? Uh, they're Stephanie Krause and Hannah Ward. They're actually both from Pennsylvania. Um, so we are an interstate band. For your new music, can you tease us a little bit? Is there anything that we can know about either like the, the content, what the songs are about or, you know, how many tracks it might be? I've been bursting to tell people. So <laughs> um, I've, I've kept it secret long enough, I feel like. Um, well, I originally was going to record a new album um, and I, I have recorded enough songs to make an album, but I think I'm probably going to release them as singles instead. So you're going to get a ton of singles um, over the next few months to a year. Um, so there are 10 new songs. Um, about half of them I'd say were written during like the pandemic so they're fairly new so pretty much unless you've watched one of my live stream shows you probably haven't heard those songs so that's pretty cool um, and then some of them are a little bit older um, I've got some some what I would call fan favorite songs on on there um, including uh, this is the weirdest song I've ever written the ballad of the sausage king <laughs> um, so uh, so you'll definitely recognize some songs if you've listened to my music before um, but I got some new stuff as well um, and kind of a lot of different genres we're really playing around with with different sounds and things um, some of them are are a little bit more like I have one song that I, I kind of put in sort of like the 90s rock like Alanis Morissette zone um, and then I have other ones that are very like you know pretty singer songwritery um, and then like the Ballad of the Sausage King is like a blues song I have one song that's going to be very like much more electronic that's called No Superhero which is really cool um, but yeah the content wise uh, I, I try to not be too samey with like the topics I cover in my songs um, so we got a lot of different things going on <laughs> um, I have songs that are more story songs I have songs that are uh, definitely about the way the pandemic affected my mental health and I'm sure a lot of other people's as well. Um, and then, you know, everything in between. <laughs> no breakup songs though. <laughs> I didn't write any breakup songs. How would you describe your song creation process? Are you walking along, you get a melody in your head, you come up with the lyrics first or, and, and are there any specific things that you like to draw inspiration from is it from your own life or do you get inspiration from movies or um it really depends on the song 
uh, in the past, I tended to write music first or more or less like kind of do both at the same time and then just like fine tune it after the fact. A lot of my more recent songs, I found myself writing lyrics first, which is funny because that's something I have never, ever done in my entire life. So I was like, oh, this is this is new and it seems to continue to happen. <laughs> um, so there is there's one song that I wrote and I actually released a demo of it in 2020 called The Same Old Mind that I came up with the piano part. And then like literally months later, wrote lyrics separately, not even thinking about that. And then was like, hey, I wonder if those will go together. And they did. <laughs> um, so it really depends on the song for, for like order of how I write things. Uh, in terms of inspiration, pretty much always my songs are about myself or somebody close to me, um, usually myself. I do have two songs on like th this new project I've been working on that are straight up story songs that I got from other places like the the Ballad of the Sausage King of course <laughs> it's not a personal story that's that's a story inspired by a, a true crime documentary I watched um and then I have another another song um called Oppie which is about a Mars rover <laughs> um, so those are not about me but pretty much the rest of them are are about me <laughs> To talk a little bit about the, the pandemic. So you said you have one song that's inspired by the pandemic. What was kind of your experience through, I guess now it's been almost two years since the, I guess the quote unquote pandemic started. What, how has that affected your songwriting or are there any words of advice or encouragement that you have for people who are, are creative like yourself and, you know, could use a little, a little boost. Yeah, the pandemic definitely was was hard on musicians because you know there were there were no shows and for 2020 especially I had a lot of really exciting things lined up that you know when the cancellation started rolling in you know it was it was very sad uh, for myself and I know for a lot of other people um, so like at the beginning of the pandemic I was very disappointed <laughs> about a lot of things um, but then I kind of settled in and was like wow I have a lot of time like back back in the day I spent so much time in my car because I was living half the week with my parents, half the week with my fiance. And like, I just never had time for myself. And then when it was like, well, I'm working at home. I have no commitments. I just found myself becoming more creative, like actually having time to be like, hey, let me write some songs and actually spend time on it. And let me, you know, be creative about other aspects of my music career. Let me take new photos. Let me do all these things because I actually had time. So in a way it was kind of nice. Um, to not have a crazy schedule because it allowed me to focus more on my artistry. Um, and then of course, you know, just the state of the world definitely found its way into my songs. <laughs> um, one in particular, which uh, I've, I've been calling Promise Me, um, is, you know, I, I, I would have just called it the 2020 song. You know? <laughs> um, it it kind of covers everything that happened, my, my feelings about it. Um, it's, it's definitely going to be the most rock and roll of my my next 10 songs because that's, you know, that's, that's just a feeling that was behind it. But, you know, the pandemic, I think, really forced a lot of people to think outside the box in how they could continue on their paths or maybe change their paths. And um, so my, my advice for anyone who's uh, still trying to find their way is just, you know, kind of take it as an opportunity to reinvent yourself and find new places to, you know, do things and, and new avenues um, because there, there actually was a lot of opportunity for that over the past two years. And now that things are opening up again, I feel like I actually have a better sense of myself as an artist and where I want to go than I did before all of this happened. Right, right. And, and where have you been recording? Have you been doing things at home or have you been going to a studio or what's that process been like? I've been recording with uh, my producer is Tommy Straza, um, who I've played a lot of gigs with, uh, like duo gigs and stuff. Um, we've recorded at Volume 4 Studios in New Brunswick, uh, the majority of the stuff. Some of it we've done at home. Um, it's been a really fun process getting to work with him. And I've also been working with Joshua Van Ness, who played drums. Um, and it was just really nice because, you know, as a soloist, uh, I've heard my songs by myself with piano and guitar and nothing else. <laughs> and so kind of hearing all of these other instruments bring my songs to life has just been really cool and they got my vision right away. Um, so it's it's been really fun. I haven't recorded in like a studio for many, many years. Like my entire last album was done in a home studio. Uh, all the stuff I've recorded myself obviously was in a home studio. So like actually going to a, like a real music studio again has been cool. <laughs> you know, it feels very official. <laughs> um, 
And then as for as for Barty Party's album, we've been recording with uh, Dave Paracco, who produced my debut album, um, and his his studio is Jack Cat Productions. So that's been a really fun experience too, because this is actually like the first time I've recorded with a band, you know, that that wasn't just playing my music, but you know, we all collaborated on. So that was a lot of fun too. What would you say you're most looking forward to in in 2022, aside from you know the pandemic going away and the world returning to quote unquote normal? <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be like the craziest year for me that I've had in a long time. And I feel like that's compounded by the fact that I haven't done anything for two years. Um, but like in my personal life, I'm getting married. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. <laughs> um, of course, I have so much new music coming out. Um, you know, just kind of putting the finishing touches on my original music. I have some music video ideas lined up. Um, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to filming those and, and getting my own original music out. I'm really, really looking forward to Barty Party's album coming out because we did a Kickstarter to fund that album in December, 2019. And then the pandemic happened. So like, this has been a long time coming and I'm just excited that the world will finally get to hear it. <laughs> um, I have a lot of really exciting shows um, of my own coming up. Um, I don't know when this will be posted, but my next gig is going to be at the coffee house in Edison, um, opening up for the WAG. So it's just going to be a lot of fun. That's on February 11th. Um, and then Barty Party, like we're, we're mostly a Renaissance fair act. So we're going to be playing at a lot of different Renaissance fairs. And uh, one really exciting one, which I'm not allowed to say yet because we haven't signed all of the paperwork, but we're going to be traveling quite far for one. So I'm, I'm very excited. My fiance, Eric, started a nonprofit called the Artist Collective Troop, um, which is here in, uh, we're based in Ocean in Monmouth County. And it's just, you know, it's to support the arts communities um, within our area, putting on theatrical shows, um, offering educational opportunities and, you know, different things, open mics. And our next show is going to be a musical review, which is going to be on April 23rd. We're holding auditions next weekend. Uh, and I'm going to be music directing it. It's going to be all songs from your favorite animated movies. So I've got a, a lot of things happening <laughs> that I'm very excited about. Oh, I love that. Congratulations on your engagement. <laughs> that organization is it a nonprofit or is it a community group or yeah we're we're still in the process of becoming official we're it's pending but uh, we are a nonprofit organization um we had uh, an open mic that we ran in october and then we did christmas caroling um at several different things during uh, the holidays to raise money for the ashley lauren foundation which is um hope and help for children with cancer uh so so our goal really is you know we want to support artists and you know children and teens who want to get into the arts in various different ways but then use the events and things that we do to raise money for other local nonprofits. So, so um, we're, we're hoping to have our next one go to make a wish. We're again in the paperwork for that, but, uh, but we got a lot of good stuff going on. Where can people find you, both you as a, a solo <laughs> artist and also Barty Party and uh, the new nonprofit? There's so many things, right? <laughs> Um, well, you can find me at, on all of the social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, easiest way probably to get to it would be through my website, which is chelseacarlsonmusic.com. Um, you can also find us on all the social media for Barty Party as well. But again, our website is bartyparty.com. Um, as we were founded at a Renaissance fair playing peasants who can't read, Barty Party is misspelled. So party is spelled with a D, not a T. <laughs> um, and then the Artist Collective Troupe, you can find at artistcollectivetroupe.org. And that's troupe, T-R-O-U-P-E. Is there anyone who you'd like to give a, a shout out to? Oh, there's so many people. I don't know how many I'm allowed to give shout outs to. As, as many as you like. <laughs> well, of course, shout outs to Tommy Straza, who's producing my album. He has a bunch of his own music and he's in a couple of different bands. So check him out. Joshua Van Ness, who played drums on my album. He's also in the WAG. Um, I want to give a shout out to two of my former students who have been releasing music. I've been teaching lessons for over a decade and two of my students who were with me for several years, they're now both in college, just released new music. Um, one is Lauren Anufrik. She just released her debut single, Haircut, on Spotify a couple weeks ago. Um, her, her stage name is Ren, R-E-N. Um, and another one of my former students, Isabel Taran, just released her debut EP a few months ago on, on uh, Spotify and everything. So check them out. <laughs> um, and then just two people that I love to listen to who are, who are local New Jersey girls are Soph, um, who just released her debut album today, um, which I think is called Dawn, and uh, Gina Royale, who has just released a ton of fantastic music over the past year. So check them out. Do you feel like a, a pride, like a, like a mom pride of like oh, yeah. seeing, seeing them grow and, and take so off? Much, and... So much. One of my students um, who's now a freshman in college texted me last week 
a, a YouTube video um, of like a benefit concert that she was in in her college doing a song that I taught her in lessons like three years ago. And I literally was like holding back tears and like, oh, my baby's all grown up. <laughs> Cause like I taught her since she was 11, you know? My longest running student that I, I have now started in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, and is, she's now um, a junior, I think in high school. So it's just like, but, oh no, she's a senior. Oh my God, she's a senior in high school. <laughs> and I started teaching her when she was in third grade. Classroom teachers, you get them for 10 months. I get you for 10 years. Like I really get to know you by the time we're done. <laughs> it's amazing that you've kept busy and also um, so positive and upbeat. I've been, I've been lucky. I know a lot of people have not been as lucky as I have over the past year. Um, even it, like the height of nobody going out and everything. Uh, I was I was able to continue teaching my lessons on you know on the internet and I feel like I got to see people as a result of that like I saw 30 people a week from teaching so you know I I was lucky that I even though my life kind of came home <laughs> it didn't stop <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah it's, it's been a ride hasn't it <laughs> the hardest times sometimes we come back even better and stronger than before.